Get out a pencil and paper, please. Um, write this down. There are 46 work days left between now and Christmas. 46 work days. Now you can look at that and say that's a little amount, or you can look at it and say it's a lot amount, okay? Now, for those of you that, for those of us that, that have read the Bible or read the Bible or have gone to Bible school or Sunday school or something like that, we've heard that the creation was in seven days. So how many seven days do you have in 46? Look how much time you have. Look, how, look what you can do with 46 days. This is like lifetimes. I mean, lots of opportunity. But I want you to do this. If you want to excel, if you want to go to the next level, and if you want to ensure a fabulous fourth quarter, you have to write these three words down and work on them. First word, focus. Second word, consistency. And the third word is commitment. Focus, consistency, and commitment. When I talk about focus, that's how long can you work with intensity, focused intensity on a task before you get interrupted. Focused intensity, how long before you get interrupted? Consistency is how often can you come back to that task and repeat the task over and over and over again, being consistent, whether it's prospecting, whether it's going to the gym, whether it's the food or the diet that you have. And then the third word is commitment. No matter what is going on, I am going to get this done. No matter what's going on, I'm going to get this done. And I, I kind of wanted to give you an example of commitment. Okay? So think about this. Don't, don't write anything down. Just think about this. There's a 60-foot plank, and it's made of steel, and it's very, very thick, and it's two feet wide, and it's about three feet off the ground. Everybody got a picture of that? 60 feet long, two feet wide, very thick. It's got supports all the way. It's not bouncing, not at all, and I ask you, to walk from one end of that plank to the other without falling off. <coughs> Is there anybody here that wouldn't get up there and try doing that? Okay, most of you would attempt that, right? Say yes. yes. Okay. So what if I raise the plank from three feet to six feet high? Okay, I'm raising it here. Now, am I going to lose some of you because you're afraid you might fall off? Okay, some of you might say no. So I would say to you, well, what if I gave you $100 to walk the plank for 60 feet, two feet wide at six feet off the ground? Some of you that said no would say, okay, for, for 100 bucks, I might do it. Some might not. So what if I raised it to... 12 feet off the ground. I might lose a few of you, but what if I changed it from $100 to $1,000? For 1000 bucks, 12 feet off the ground, 60 feet, three feet um, 2 feet wide. Secure. You'd walk across there. We well, certainly consider it for $1,000, right? Say yes. yes. What if I raised it to 20 feet high? Do I have any takers at 20 feet for a thousand bucks? I had a few of you. Okay, 20 feet for a thousand dollars. Good. Can I get a few more of you if I went to five thousand dollars? If I went to five thousand dollars, would I get a few more people that would walk across? Okay. So uh, we all have a price. I like that. That's good. That's good. All right. I'm going to raise this plank to 60 feet off of the freeway, 
There's a couple of buildings that are side by side in the Pointy Hills Mall, and they're about 60 or 70 feet tall, okay? And they're about 40 feet across, with side by side buildings. So let's say I take the plank, and I put it across, and it's very secure. It's a little windy, but it's very secure. There's no give in it. I've really done a fine job in setting it up. And we're 40 feet off the, or excuse me, 60 feet off the ground. I'm not going to pay you anything. But I ask you to walk across it. Do I have anybody that would do it? One. <laughs> Two. Not very many people, right? And for some money, some of you might go across, right? Say yes. yes. What if you're standing here and 40 feet away on the other building, across from the plank, there's a terrorist. And this terrorist is holding one of your children or a niece or a nephew, an infant, by its legs. And it was holding them off the building, like this. And this person said, if you don't come over here, I'm going to drop the baby. Is there any one of you that wouldn't be committed to go across that plank? Big difference, isn't it? That's the commitment I'm talking about. The I won't stop until I get to the other side because I've got a reason to make it happen. The reason we don't do what we're supposed to do is because our commitments aren't at that level. Does this make sense? Say yes. yes. All right. The commitment is to do whatever it takes to get to the other side. Focus, consistency, and commitment. I wrote down here, you don't do it because you have options. You don't do it because you have options. Nobody's standing over you making you do it. I have a commitment to get to the other side because I don't want that baby to be dropped. You have to create that in your mind every day for you to do your job at the highest level possible for the next 46 days. Do you understand where we're going with this? If you did that, if you had that focus, if you had that consistency and you had that commitment, would you sell some houses, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Absolutely, in the next 40 days. It's impossible not to. The reason we don't is because we have options. <coughs> they're not good options, but they're options. So here's what I want you to do. For today, I want to keep it simple. And I want you all to do it. And I want you to be committed to it today. For today, I want you to rate yourself at the end of your prospecting hour. If you do an hour, rate yourself. If you do two hours, rate yourself for the first hour, take a break, rate yourself for the next hour. And if you do three hours, which is really what you still should be doing today, it's Monday, it's the beginning of your week, it sets the tone for the week, it sets the tone for the next 46 days, I want you to grade yourself. I want you to grade yourself in the hour with no interruptions would be a 10. So grade yourself on a 1 through 10, 1 being pathetic, 10 being I had no interruptions. You guys with me on this? I'll give you a grading sheet when we're done here. Okay, we'll pass one out for you later. Okay, that's down now. Um, so I want you to do this. I want you to grade yourself. How did I do with no interruptions? People will try to interrupt you. You know, I read this article yesterday about interruptions. Um, 
Remember the story of Pavlov's dog going through the maze and going for the food, and when they heard, when he rang a bell, he'd get food, and if he didn't ring the bell, he wouldn't get food, right? You've heard this story? We're like that when the cell phone goes off. We're, we're like that when we hear a beep on our computer. We're, we're like that when we get a text message and it goes beep. We go right to where, I don't care what you're doing, where do you go? You reach for, or you look at, uh, you, it's amazing. We're like Pavlov's dog. We go to it. I'm not even sure what's there. A lot of times, nothing great. But we take, we're, we're so into this instant stuff. Turn the darn thing off. When you're prospecting, be prospecting. When you're door knocking, be door knocking. We should do a little test. Bill, Frank, and I are going to call you during your prospecting hour. Okay? If you answer, you're in trouble. <laughs> What do you think? Cost you five bucks if you answer. What do you think? No, you can't block numbers. Turn the darn thing off, put it in the drawer, give it to the front desk, give it to Vivian, give it to Jen, but don't have it. We respond way too much for it. So I want you to rate yourself in the area of no interruptions. That's the first area. I want you to rate yourself in who did I call during that hour and in what order. And that order is really simple. You start with past client and sphere first. Why? Because they like you and you like them and you're not getting beat up on the first, second, or third phone call. The second group of people, and you call one or two of those. The second group is going to be expired and for sale by owners. Those are a little more difficult. You've got to get them, get them done, get them in there, get excited, get enthusiastic. That's now business. Then you go to two or three just listeds and just solds. And then you go to two or three hot leads. So by the time your hour's up, you should have hit anywhere from 8 to 12 contacts in a one hour period. With intensity, with focus, with consistency. That's what you need to do and grade yourself in that area. The next area I want you to grade yourself in is did I use the right script or did I wing it? So many of you are actually pretty good at the scripts and the dialogues and what to say and how to say it. But when the client comes on the phone, I don't know, you go brain dead. Client says, yeah, you go, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> when do you plan on moving? <laughs> Come on, everybody. Excitement, enthusiasm. <sighs> then the last area is never take no for an answer when yes is still possible with a qualified lead or an appointment. You're giving up way, way, way too early. You've got to be closing five to seven times because the clients are pushing you off for the first two or three. There's an automatic no on the first two or three. I wrote down here, I wrote down, turn that off, 